Welcome back. So we learned how to make images much more dynamic and sometimes they don't necessarily fit like that and you may want to like overlay text over imagery like we have over here. Certain ways we can actually do that and provide like better contrast and make this much more of a successful composition. So like I said, we'll run into a scenario where we need to place text over imagery. A lot of times there's some issues with this particular scenario because of the lack of contrast. So let's zoom in here. Now in this image, there's enough contrast here between the white text and the darker background. But if we look at this portrait over here of this man, there is just not enough contrast. And if we look and we zoom right in, we notice that we start losing things like the E, the edge of the D over here in the N. So there are ways we can kind of combat that and just make our composition much more better and much more legible. One of the ways we can actually do that is with gradients. So let's copy this composition. So just remember, you can use the file that we have for you and you can come along for this ride. So I'm going to select this image. This is a perfect example. And over here, like we did prior, I'm going to add an actual gradient to the image. You can do it other ways. You can actually add a rectangle with a gradient, but we can do this as well. So here we go. We're gonna switch those around. And now for the gradient, we'll just use like a darker color, like a black. And we'll transition to a black, but there will be a zero opacity, so we'll be able to actually see the man. So we can do something like this, which is totally fine. And we can read the text properly, but we start to lose what makes this image so good, like the contrast, the colors, we start to lose that with gradients. So what we can do, there's a couple things we can do here. We can actually decrease the opacity because you don't necessarily need that much. So you can decrease it and that would be enough for you to actually read that. We can do the same over here. Actually, this one has a little bit more happening around this image. You see a lot of the foliage, uh, there's a lot more textures, which makes it a little bit more harder to read when there's much more activity. If you look at here, there's not much activity. There's a lot of darkness behind the text. Let's do that over here. So same concept. This time, instead of flipping it around, we're just going to do that. And then perfect. So we can start doing this. So there's consistency. So we have the same color. We have uh, the black that's going right through. Now this is another issue. So like I said before, when you are applying like color or like a gradient on your photography in order to like allow for enough contrast between uh, text, you run into the issue where sometimes you lose like what makes that photograph or that image really great. The colors, uh, details. So what we can do is we can remove this one, we're gonna delete that, there we go. And we can bring this down and we can kind of like keep it just to the bottom. So it's kind of cropped and we still get that gradual darkness to lightness. And we can easily read this in comparison to what it was before. So let's take a look at what we had before. Over here, we can easily read that. Let's just remove that. And over here, it's a little bit harder. So gradients are one way that you can uh, make text over imagery work. If there's a brand color you wanna work with, you can display that as well within your gradient. So if it's something like a navy or like a teal, like you can do something like that. So it isn't just like a pure black, there's a little bit more color, you still get great results. So that's something else you can do. Another thing you can do is, let's just copy that and we're going to option shift and we're gonna just drag that to the other side of our frame. Another thing you can do to create enough contrast in these situations is use a solid color. This can be done in a variety of ways. One way I like doing it is you can select the image like before, add a fill on top. And instead of a linear gradient, we're just gonna go with like a solid fill. We're not gonna do that. 
But like I said before, if we can just grab like a color like that, which is like a dark green foresty like color, maybe not suitable for that image. But if we grab something like that and then we start decreasing the opacity, you can do something like this. And, you know, it may not suit the style or the tone of the brand. And that's totally fine. You got to find out what works for you, what works for your client and apply that visual style. So you could do something like this. Whoa, you can make it a little darker and decrease the opacity. And there you go, you get a little bit more visual contrast that way. Now what I like to do, and this really depends on your imagery and how the composition works. So it may not work on this one, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So what I like to do is I like to grab a rectangle. So I'll select my rectangle with R, grab it there. Just drag it across your image like that. And I'm going to click the image. So shift, click the rectangle, hold shift, click the image, right click and send that to the back. You can also shift command open bracket. So now we have that. Now that doesn't look too good but we can do something really subtle. So I like usually doing like a gray or a dark black and then decreasing the opacity just a bit. So we're at like 25% opacity. It's very interesting in terms of like the actual composition now, like it's a little more dynamic. It's much more readable, legible. And the only thing I would recommend is in this scenario to be consistent. So if you're gonna apply this to one image, you should apply it to every other image. So let me bring that to the front, shift click with that background image and send that right to the back. The sizes could vary depending on the size of your typography that you have here. But this is another way to do it. So I'm gonna shift click, bring that over. And like I said before, you know, it may not work with an image like this where the focal point is right in the foreground, right in the middle, and it may cover that. And that's unfortunate. So like I said before, figure out what works for you. There isn't like a right and wrong, uh, but this doesn't necessarily look as good as having maybe like a gradient. A gradient may be like a better application for these for these images because it's much more softer. Uh, you can apply some color there. And it's not a harsh line that's going right through like a person's face. But similarly to what we saw with the gradients, we can actually like pick a color out, a brand color, and work with that. And that just reinforces your brand identity, reinforces your color palette. We can do the same with this. So I'm just gonna grab like a color like that. And there you go, they look a little less static with the black. Black's kind of harsh, even grays are kind of harsh. So you can reinforce your uh, your brand's identity, your brand's tone, just with adding some colors. And it's a really subtle way of actually making sure that your typography is legible while a person's reading it through these images. So that's it for this. And we're gonna move on to illustrations next.